So I've been playing modded Minecraft, particularly in the horror category, and it made me realize that this is the closest we're probably ever going to get to true sandbox horror. If you look up the definition of what a sandbox game entails, it's a type of video game that allows the player to have a high degree of freedom to explore and interact with the game in an nonlinear fashion. And yes, there are horror games that do have some aspects of sandbox in them, but they never seem to take full advantage of it. Or in like 7 Days to Die, does not really try to scare you or make you terrified? I've looked really hard to try and find another game that has the same amount of freedom as Minecraft and yet has the ability to truly terrify you. But as to my knowledge, there isn't anything like that. And if I'm wrong, please leave a comment down below and let me know. But moving on, the reason I say modded Minecraft is the closest we'll ever get is because the horror mods that exist for Minecraft do a really good job at bringing suspense and tension to the player. It feels like a true sandbox that has some pretty creepy moments if you use the right mods. And that's why I'll be showing you the potential sandbox horror games could have by sharing my journey playing modded Minecraft. So with that said, let's get right into it. So when I first loaded into the game, I ended up spawning in a jungle biome. Now, mind you, I did my best to not look too much into the mods I've downloaded to create that fear of the unknown. I wanted to keep everything a mystery as much as possible, otherwise this gameplay wouldn't have been as scary as it was. The only thing I really knew was I'd see Herobrine, a bunch of different monsters, and that I had a creepy shader on. And oh boy, did it not disappoint. When I loaded in, the very first thing I noticed is just how creepy the jungle looks being engulfed by the dense fog. It made it really hard to know what was lurking around me, and just in general really set the mood. It didn't feel like I was playing normal Minecraft anymore. It felt like a true horror game that just happened to be Minecraft. And since I had no idea what to expect, I was really nervous of what's to come. But putting my worries aside, I headed towards an abandoned mine shaft that was sticking out from the ground in front of me. And with me being curious, I decided to go explore it. And what I found was a huge drop going deep into the dark unknown. And me being an idiot, with nothing but my bare hands, delved into the darkness without a second thought. It was very quiet and dark, but it didn't last long. Text appeared saying I had a horrible chill run down my spine. Intense music started to play, and hearing it get louder and louder made me realize something was after me. I couldn't see anything, but the music kept getting louder and louder. I went up the ladder as fast as I could and just barely made it out. And by the end of it, I was left in total shock, finally realizing what I was getting myself into. And I just remember thinking to myself, if the whole game is going to be like this, I was in for a fun surprise. This moment right here was something I've never really felt before. I had total freedom to do what I wanted, and the choices that I made created a very intense moment due to my poor choices. It was unexpected, it wasn't unfair, it fit well with the game, and best of all, I had the freedom to deal with the situation however I felt, whether it lead me to death or not. And I can't think of a single game that could give the same organic feeling to the player. And because this moment felt so unique and unscripted, it made it even more unnerving. Because I still had no clue what happened or what caused this thing to come after me. Continuing on, I try my best to play it off as if nothing happened and create my very first set of stone tools. But right before I finish, I hear a loud crash. It sounds as if something has landed from afar. And when I went to go investigate, I found a weird pod-like ship had crashed near spawn. Curious yet cautious, I made my way closer to investigate, and by investigate I mean hit it a bunch of times to see if I could break it. But it wouldn't budge, so I decided to leave it alone and finish creating my stone tools. After I had all my tools, I noticed it started getting dark out, and since I had no idea if that monster in the mineshaft only attacks when it's dark, I felt I was on a time crunch. In my mind, I felt that if I didn't get the torches in time, I'd succumb to this monster. So I decided to go deeper into the jungle and gather resources to create charcoal and craft myself some torches. And thankfully I managed to craft them in time before dark, but quickly realized this monster doesn't attack when it's dark out, leaving me with more unanswered questions about this monster I encountered. But before I could really think about what could have caused the attack, I hear a horrifying noise from afar. Nervous, I get my sword out and wait. I hear it slowly coming closer in the darkness with the terrible noises getting louder and louder. And just when I thought it was safe, it jumps out from the darkness and comes at me fast. I do my best to defend myself, but realize I won't make it. I quickly change my plans to escaping, but it's too late and I die from the horrifying beast. 
I spawn back and I decide to run through the jungle to get away from this horrifying thing, knowing damn well I won't progress anywhere if I'm around that monster. As I make my escape, going through the dense jungle, I come across weeping angels and tons of other hostile mobs. I barely manage to make it out of the jungle and make a hole in the mountain to take shelter. And finally, I am able to relax and gain my composure. I never felt so tense playing Minecraft before. I felt on guard through the whole night. I didn't know what to expect and the monsters did not disappoint. I didn't have much of a choice but to run, creating this feeling of helplessness. But in reality, I had total freedom of what I wanted to do. I could have gone back and tried to take down the monster, or I could have blocked myself in until daytime. I also could have made an underground base to create a safety zone. Either way, I had tons of ways to go about the situation, and all of it felt really organic and didn't feel forced or repetitive. Hearing that monster in the darkened fog was horrifying. It sounded huge and scary. It left me imagining what this thing could have looked like. I was so tense that any sounds I heard that night felt as if it could have been a monster. It was the tensest part of the game and the most suspenseful, because I didn't know what to expect and everything played in such a way that it didn't leave me much time to wind down and relax. I think the only thing that could have ruined the tension is getting killed too many times, because when you die you lose all your items. I mean sure you can try and get them back, but if it's around a strong monster good luck getting it back without dying. When I was waiting for daytime, I was thinking how cool it'd be if there was a horror game where you had the same amount of freedom as Minecraft, but had to survive through horrifying monsters that could haunt you, stalk you, curse you, or just outright kill you. Each monster would have its strengths and weaknesses, and you'd use the resources from this horrifying world to build a base and create ways, or solutions, to dealing with these monsters. I mean, imagine the possibilities. I can't think of one game like that, and I couldn't really understand why no one has tried to make a game like this. But I soon realized why. And we'll find out soon as we go through my adventure of this mod pack. So back to the game, as I wait for daytime, I go and recreate my stone tools. And by the time I finished, the sun finally came up. And I took the opportunity to explore and find a good place for a starter base. As I explored, I came across an old ruined town and managed to find some pretty good loot to get me started. Continuing forward, I explored more and found another ruined building and decided to take shelter since it was getting late again. But that plan quickly became pointless because I soon realized that creepers are now programmed to blow up any block starter in the way of getting to you. There were tons of explosions and it quickly made a huge hole in the building, so I was forced to quickly escape and do the best to survive the night because if I didn't, I would spawn all the way back to the beginning. As I continued, I found a weird structure that I'm sure was placed by no one other than Herobrine. It was an odd feeling knowing that I'm not the only one active in this game. For all I knew, he could have been watching me from afar this whole time. It gave me an unnerving feeling just imagining him appearing from the dense fog. But I shrugged that feeling off and managed to find a good place to set up my starter base. Using the wood around the area, I created a nice little house just big enough to get me started. I was, however, worried that it would quickly get blown up by unsuspecting creepers, which is why I decided to place torches around my base. While I was working on my house, I also had my very first encounter with Herobrine. It wasn't what I'd imagined. It wasn't a loud jump scare. It was almost like I wasn't meant to see him. And boy, did it get me. <laughs> It was basically a silent jump scare. He was watching me through my house, and when I finally noticed him, he swiftly disappeared out of thin air. It was a weird feeling, not knowing how long he was there for, and it made me wonder how many times I hadn't noticed him. It's an odd experience because I remember playing Minecraft alone, and there'd be times when I swore I saw something at the corner of my eye. But this time, there really was something staring me down out with my peripheral vision. It was a really good silent jump scare, and made me curious what other tricks Herobrine would have up his sleeve. But I continue on and plan to venture into a cave system to get some well needed resources. When I headed over, I started to get nervous again because I had no idea what could be down in these caves. I didn't have a lot of good stuff on me, and I knew whatever was down there could easily kill me if I wasn't careful. So I went into the caves and made sure to be extra cautious. Thankfully, nothing too dangerous was nearby, and I used my torches to light up the bottom of the ravine just to make sure I wasn't going anywhere dangerous. As I made my way down, I realized just how empty it felt. There was some eerie background music, but other than that, it was dead. It was very odd, and I felt like something or someone was watching me behind my back. 
As much as I wanted to leave the ravine, I knew I had to continue to get the resources I needed. So I carried on and explored the depths of this horrifying cave. And as I was exploring, I realized just how foggy and dark the caves were. It was very hard to see without a torch, so I quickly learned that if I ever wanted to venture into a cave, I'd need to make sure I had torches with me. I also came across some camouflage creepers that blended in with the caves. It was very creepy and not something I was expecting. Other than that though, I didn't notice much of anything else during my trip, but I managed to safely get the materials I needed without dying, and that's all I could honestly ask for. However, I did get a really good jump scare from Herobrine. I turned around and there he was right in front of me and jumped into the screen caused me to totally freak out while I was trying to escape the caves. Overall, my very first experiences in the caves was interesting. I felt the tension, the atmosphere was spot on, some of the encounters were interesting and caught me off guard, but there really wasn't much happening down in the caves besides the usual monsters in Minecraft, so I felt it was lacking a little bit. Eventually, I had to go down a second time to get more resources, and this is when problems arise. Anytime I'd stay in a dark area for too long, music would start playing, but would abruptly stop when I'd get into some form of light source. Now, on paper this doesn't sound bad, but this would happen way too quickly. I'd be trying to explore, and I'd hear the noises again, so I'd have to quickly place down a torch, even though the torches in my hand emits light. It'd be a very easy fix just to make the handheld torches count as a light source instead of when it's just placed. But even then, it got repetitive from then on. This shadow monster didn't come across as scary to me anymore, and started to get annoying which is what you never want in a horror game. And at this point, I was a little worried about what my experiences would be with the other mods here on out, because I'd imagine they would eventually become repetitive as well. And this might be why there hasn't been a horror game with the sandbox mechanics like Minecraft. Maybe it's just too hard to balance the freedom of the player while also not making the scares feel repetitive. It would be hard to make encounters always feel organic since you have no way of knowing what the player will do in the game, since they have so much freedom. It's hard to create suspenseful moments when you don't have a lot of control over what the player does. But we'll get back to this idea soon. Back to the game, after I finished getting more resources from the cave, I headed back to my starter house and did some more exploring. And while I was looking around, I found a perfect spot to place my final house. So I went and transferred all my stuff from the starter base to this new area. But while I did this, it started raining, and it rained hard. I could hear the thunder and the hard rain pelting the ground. There was something about the shader that made the storm feel more stressful. Visibility was even worse now, especially when it got darker. And I think because of that, I didn't feel as safe. I wasn't able to hear any monsters nearby, and I had a really hard time seeing them from afar. It was a tense moment trying to move my stuff without dying because I had no clue something powerful and horrific would come by. At this time, I was still worried that the monster from the beginning that killed me would slowly make its way to where I lived, but thankfully that never happened. Once I finished transferring all my stuff, I finally got to clearing the area and building my base. It didn't take too long, and I managed to get myself a nice mineshaft next to my final house. One strange thing that did occur, however, that really gave me the goosebumps was when I turned around from mining out my mineshaft. Herobrine was right there, behind me, just watching me. And I think the creepiest part is he was watching me before, and I didn't even catch it. He disappeared so fast, I didn't even see him. And from then on, I just constantly felt like I was being watched. But after I finished my mineshaft, I decided to do some more exploring and came across a village and started noticing that some of the animals were now possessed by Herobrine, with their eyes being pure white. It was very unnerving and again just made me feel like I was constantly being watched. And as I continued, I managed to find a lava pool and decided to get obsidian to make another portal when I get back. As I continued my horrific adventure, I found a very strange sighting up ahead. It was a forest without leaves, and some of the trunks had redstone torches on them hinting that Herobrine was behind all this. It was so unsettling seeing it all, seeing the power Herobrine had over this world. And all I can say is that it definitely made the trip home far from peaceful. Moments like these made Herobrine feel more real since I could see the real damage he's been doing to the world. I think something that would make this more impactful for all structures is if I encountered the area without them first. That way, when I come back, I'd notice the random new structures, and it would feel even more unnerving, 
because I didn't make them, and it gets rid of the idea that it's just a world-generated structure. It would make Cure Brian feel more real within this game. But continuing on, once I made it home, I made the nether portal and gathered gold nuggets to make a Herobrine shrine to hopefully aggravate him even more. Because, you know, why not, right? But while I did this, I noticed how empty the nether looked. With the dense fog, it was like I was in an empty corpse. The feeling was very hard to put into words. There's not much to look at, just the red fog of the nether. And as I continued, I got attacked by a huge pig-like monster, and it totally caught me off guard, since I've never encountered something like this in the game before. Thankfully, it wasn't too difficult to defeat, but I did come across more of those weeping angels, and they are very creepy when they come up unexpectedly. You hear something move, and you look back to find a stone statue looking in your direction from afar. Not thinking much of it, you continue what you were doing, but you hear something move again. And at this point, you look back and realize what's going on. Each time you look away, the statue gets closer to you. And you can only assume if it gets too close, it will kill you. But I found out the hard way. I didn't realize there was more than one weeping angel, and it came up from behind me and teleported me to this strange bedrock dimension. It was empty, just me and the dense fog. I couldn't go up or down. Thankfully, I was lucky enough to have this strange potion on me that would take me back home but I still wonder what I would have done if I didn't have the potion on me. I probably would have been doomed, stuck there for eternity. Either way, I made it back and used the materials I had to create two variants of the Herobrine Shrines in hope of getting some more unique occurrences while I play. After I finished, I decided to go explore in a different direction and found a base as if it was made by another person. It was very strange and I had no idea what to expect when I entered, but luckily nothing bad happened. Instead, I found a player that trades items to help with fighting off Herobrine. It would make sense since the player has his house blocked off with cobblestone for safety. Overall, a very strange experience seeing it in the middle of the woods. After I was done exploring the base, I continued forward and practically got insta-killed by Herobrine. It looked as if he had a bedrock sword, which would explain how he killed me so fast. Either way, I thought it was a little much since it totally dilutes the fear if you don't have a way of defending yourself. And at this point in the game, Herobrine's appearances started getting old, and I didn't get scared so easily. So I ended up getting annoyed because I had to go back to where I was to get my stuff back. Thankfully, Herobrine was gone, but it was still frustrating having to come all the way back to where I was. And this is a huge shame because the main part of the mod pack was Herobrine. And now that he isn't scary anymore, there wasn't much left to be scared of when I was playing. Herobrine's silent jump scares were becoming predictable and repetitive. And when he did do something different, it wasn't enough or it just felt annoying to deal with. But I did get something refreshing. After sorting my stuff out, I continued and came across something absolutely dreadful. In the middle of the woods was a huge tree with a villager hanging from one of the branches. It was so creepy, so off, and so different from what I know about Minecraft. It catched me so off guard and I honestly just stood there in shock at what I was looking at. The noises the villager made was so disturbing, with him wheezing and gasping as if he's still struggling to stay alive. Me being the idiot I am, I went closer to him and realized you could trade with him to get very odd items. Overall, it was a very strange experience, and if this mod pack had more of this in it, I think it would help to keep it exciting seeing all the horrific things placed about the world. But back to the game, after I witnessed this atrocity, I decided to head back and create a flamethrower for the thing back at the main spawn point. I later found out the monster that killed me so easily at the beginning was from the mod from Another World, which was based off the movie The Thing. It's a really cool parasite mod where a monster crash lands, hence the pot at the beginning, and slowly infects other living beings. The only way to know if they've been infected is by hitting them and the only way to kill them is with fire, which is why I made a flamethrower. I thought the best way to end this adventure was to get revenge on the creature that brutally killed me early in the game. So I ventured all the way back and found that the space pod was still in the same spot. I decided to hit it again, but this time, tons of horrific creatures came out from it and fled away. Realizing that the thing was probably from this pod, I tried to track it down around the area, but to no avail. And before I could find it, Herobrine ended up killing me again. And that's where I decided to leave off on my adventure. As you can see here, it's by no means perfect. There are tons of problems with it, from it being too repetitive, some things not making sense, or just some monsters not appearing at all. 
I had a lot of interesting mods that added in some very interesting creatures, but I never once saw them during my playthrough. It was supposed to add variety, but it didn't really work out the way I'd hoped. And it sucks because it's the closest I've gotten to true sandbox horror. There is no horror game with the same amount of freedom that Minecraft has. And maybe that's for a good reason. It would be too difficult to try and account for all the player's actions to create a game that manages to create suspense and tension. It's too much of a headache to create, but maybe one day there will be a game that allows you to have full control and that gives you tons of horrifying experiences that feel organic. I think in order to have a true horror experience in a sandbox game, you have to create a system that constantly changes and evolves as the player gets used to the world around them. Because the main problem I came across was that there wasn't enough happening, and the events that did happen appeared too often or became too repetitive. You also need to make sure that the game is balanced, meaning you have to make sure the player always has a fair chance in every situation, which that alone is not an easy task. I went into this wondering why there hasn't been a horror game with the sandbox mechanics that of Minecraft. But now I've come out of this realizing that the answer is, it's just really difficult. Making a sandbox game is hard enough and to add horror into it makes it 10 times more complex. But I do however feel that it's still possible. It's just gonna be a while till we see something like this since you need to have a lot of funds and experience to create such a game. But I could be wrong, I haven't played every horror game out there and maybe I've missed it. So if you know of a game like that, please let me know. If you'd like to discuss more about this, join the Discord where we share our passion for horror as well as our passion to create. Also, don't be afraid to hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on future videos like this one. With that said, thanks for watching and see you next time. time.